Parks of Cali, France, another image on a wall depicts a child with a suitcase looking toward the English Channel with a vulture perched on her telescope. Those are just two of the latest politically charged works by Banksy, a notorious street artist known for his, or her, anonymous critiques of war and surveillance culture. After more than a decade hidden behind a cloak of anonymity, Banksy may have been unmasked at last. For years, rumors have linked Banksy to a man named Robin Gunning, and now researchers say they have scientific proof to back up the link. They come to this conclusion using a technique known as geographic profile, and its applications extend far beyond Banksy to everything from tracking the spread of mosquito-borne diseases to preventing terrorist attacks. Kim Rospo is a criminologist at Texas State University and one of the researchers behind the study. He's in San Marcos, Texas. Kim, welcome to Day 6. Good morning, Brent. Kim, what have you uncovered that suggests that Banksy may well be Robin Gunn? Well, when we uh, decided to do the analysis of the Banksy art site, we originally were going to assess all the credible Banksy suspects. It turns out there's only one, which is Robin Gunningham. When we looked at the locations where the Banksy graffiti art um, is located, we found uh, a very close match in terms of an analysis of those locations and those places like home and school uh, where um, Robin uh, Gunningham has connections. So what were you analyzing? When you, when you were looking at the locations of the art and the places where Robin Gunningham went to school or, or played soccer. Can you break down how those things related to each other in a way that gave you information? Well, when people choose to do something, whether it's a criminal committing a crime or a graffiti artist choosing a location to uh, uh, stencil something on the wall, they want to operate in areas that are not too far from their home, within their comfort zone, but they also don't want to do it right outside their door. So there's a relationship uh, and some balance between being close but not too close. And while you can't say much from a given location of just one incident, when you're dealing with dozens, or in this case, 140, the rules of probability are such that you can say something you know, quite strong. Imagine that you're explaining it to a classroom full of fourth graders. How would you explain the, the, way, that your, the way that your analysis works? Well, we use a software system that takes into account the actual pattern of location. So think of these as points on a map. That pattern is, in effect, a clue. And we can mathematically analyze that, try to determine the origin for those points. So whether it's a criminal leaving their home, going out to commit a crime, or someone leaving their home to go out to um, uh, do some graffiti, we can try to determine the most likely origin for that particular pattern. And, 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 this case would be where Banksy lived, worked, and played. It sounds like there is some reasonable precision to the tools that you're using. So what other mysteries could geographic profiling help solve? Well, originally it was developed um, when I was a doctoral student at Simon Fraser University to be a, a, a policing tool, something that investigators would use if they were doing um, an investigation on a serial rapist, a serial murderer, or an arsonist. Um, but since that time, uh, we found applications in biology, zoology, epidemiology, counterterrorism. One of the more exciting was applying it to epidemiology. We looked at cases of malaria in Cairo, Egypt, and then we looked at where mosquitoes uh, that carried the um, malaria virus were breeding. And we were able to infer the, the location of the mosquito breeding pools from where the um, malaria cases had occurred. The best way to think about this is an information management tool or a suspect prioritization tool. And the smaller the focus, the better the job we've done. Because we said, hey, rather than look at a thousand suspects, mm -hmm. you can find who you're looking for in the top ten. Mm -hmm. So serial killers generally operate locally. Uh, you track the, the Banksy data in a couple of cities. Terrorists operate globally. How do you zero in on a terrorist cell that might have components all over the world? Let me give you an example of an actual case of study which involved the assassination of a former minister of justice in Ankara, Turkey. This is a fairly complicated problem. It's 